Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be doing some perennial planting and reworking. So we're going to be in this space right beneath the Instant Karma Elderberry that we recently trimmed up into more of a tree form. And I have to tell you, that just transformed this space to me. Up until that point, I just kept walking by it thinking this shrub is wrong. It gets way too big for this area. It looks very overgrown and unkept. What an easy fix it was just to trim it up. I mean, I was really out nothing just to give it a try and it took me all of, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes to get the whole base trimmed out and cleaned up and it just transformed the spot. I love it. And we're out kind of early-ish, huh, dude? We just got up. We're trying to beat the heat. It's supposed to be 103 today. So the thing about perennials in the heat, uh, you know, cause we keep going all through the season. We keep planting, we keep just moving things around. It's all about keeping things hydrated. Things may shock a little bit. Most of the time they don't. Uh, sometimes if they do shock, we just cut them back and they grow back fresh. So that's kind of the approach we take. Just keep things well hydrated. I mean, that's what it's about when it's 103 anyway for everything. So here's the rose that we trimmed up in the same video. And as you walk through, I actually didn't realize never usually out here at this point of the day <laughs> first thing in the morning the sun shines right through like a beacon on those white wands Veronica but this here is the instant karma sorry about the weird lighting I'm gonna kind of shade it here but oh my goodness it's just so gorgeous you can see I've got some plants sitting below it I'm gonna be working those in probably not in the arrangement I've got them in currently because I feel like let me stand to the side here give you a view this way I feel like I need to move that white wands back. See, it's fighting with that echinacea right there, right behind it, which I absolutely love. Isn't that beautiful? I think that's the white swan echinacea. It's just such a, a, like a dainty one and gorgeous. And just that hint of yellow from the cone in the center just brings a little bright shine here. There's a peony right behind it, which is young and it will get bigger. Um, Anyway, I feel like I need to just dig these white wands up and still use them in this space, but maybe work them back a bit. And then adding these wildberry hookera in, I think is the way to go because this area gets sun in the morning and then shade in the afternoon and evening. So I think they'll do really well. They'll thrive and they'll bring a depth of color, something that we kind of need in this space. Also, you can see the Daisy Mays are just going for it right now. Aren't those beautiful? The bloom to leaf ratio is pretty amazing on this variety right here. We should go down real quick and take a look at the other ones. You know, while I'm over here too, I should probably do some perennial maintenance. The Nepeta, I need to get that cut back from its first flush of bloom. I need to deadhead roses and clean up the delphiniums a bit. Here's another instant karma, which I actually love, and I let that one just go. I think that's a beautiful structure back here. But look at the daisy maze. Look at how beautiful these are. My word. They're just big puffy clouds right now of white. <laughs> and the white wands down here needs to be cut back as well. Hey, Russell. So that's pretty much the order of this morning. I've got the wildberry hookra, fall in love sweetly anemones in this space. And then I'm also planning on planting some Veronica out. I had these sitting around the greenhouse and they do not hold well in the heat in their containers at all. Um, in fact, they're kind of past their first flush of bloom, so they don't look amazing, but I need to get them out in the ground. They'll be so much happier. And I've got a gorgeous grass. So we've got the pink potion Veronica, so you can kind of see the color there. But see the plants, we've already kind of cut back the bloom stalks from earlier. And then we've got the purple illusion. I love Veronica so much. And then this grass is called the Niagara Falls. It's a type of panicum that I think, is it new this year or next year? But it's got big, bold leaves here and beautiful bloom, uh, bloom seed heads right here. It just looks so soft and gorgeous. I would really like this color, I think maybe worked in. I, I'm not sure, we'll see what happens over there. But this one grows four feet tall. I don't know a whole lot about it yet. Oh, four feet wide, dang. Zone four through nine. Okie doke. So we need to make sure that this one has space to spread out. Okay, so at this point, we'll just get started with this project and I'll stop along the way if I feel like there's something I'm doing that maybe needs a little bit more detailed explanation, but you guys know how this kind of stuff goes. Just digging plants up, shifting them around. It's kind of a constant in my garden. Here we go. <laughs>
guys, so we've got part of the project done. The plant maintenance is done. I've got everything laid out fairly close to where I think it's gonna end up. So let's take a look before we continue on. You can see that we're getting into a little bit more shade, which is nice. And they will come back into the sun for a little while uh, later on this morning before they're in shade from the arbs here. First thing I did was cut back the white ones, Veronica, and then I put it on this tarp and watered it really deeply. So it's a really heavy tarp at this point. And I don't think it's actually gonna make it back into this area. I don't think it's quite the look I want in here. So this will probably go out to the South Garden or somewhere down the way. Here's my pile of debris. So I did cut back the delphiniums. There were two blooms that were like halfway good still. So it's a little bit of a bummer. But if I left those two stalks all alone by themselves, they would flop over so fast. So these will reflush though. So if we look back here, you can see the base of the plants, sort of. I need to rake, but uh, those will come back and bloom again this season. I deadheaded the Royal Jubilee Roses, which are in here, uh, cleaned up the phlox, cleaned up the iris, cut back the nepeta. See, I take it down to the leaf canopy and I don't do like a perfection job because once this starts pushing new blooms and new growth, it'll cover right over anything that I might have missed. Then in this space, I laid out the hookahs, which I think the only change I might make at this point is I might dig that nepeta out so that I could have a swoop of hookah, but I'm not even sure that that's the look I want. I don't, I kind of want them to be intermingled a little bit. So right here, this line right here, lining up with that hookah, that's the center of the walkway. And we are gonna bring a pillar out here in a second with a small container as kind of a vista, something to stop your eye that's really pretty and interesting. If we like the pillar here, I will probably end up ringing with the hookah instead of leaving them kind of apart over here. If not, if we're just gonna go with plants, I'll let them be a little bit more natural. I initially thought about putting a fountain in here. In fact, I think I mentioned that we have that small Hebe fountain that was underneath the crabapple tree uh, to start with. It's behind our barn right now and it's gonna end up somewhere. Uh, but I thought I might use it here. I still think it's a little bit too big, even though it's a smaller-ish fountain. I think it's too big for this space. We've got a lot going on in here uh, and it's likely that I may not even leave the pillar here just because I don't want, you know, just because there's an open space doesn't mean you have to fill it with something like that. It can just be beautiful plants right here uh, because we do have the beautiful Esplanade urns very nearby. I mean, from this view, seeing something right there would be very nice, but if you just, you know, look right there, and then down the way you can see all the rest of the urns and I don't want it to look like too much. So we'll try it, see if we like it and go from there. Um, nothing is planted yet. So the wildberry hookahs, there are two, four, six of those. Um, there's a, look at this, Ugh, sugar, what is this one? Sugar shack, a uh, button bush. Look, look how pretty. This is the same one that we have down the way. It's like on the very end over here, right here. Look at how gorgeous that is. And I thought it was dead and it's not, and it's blooming and looking beautiful. I love the glossy green leaves and it only grows, I think this is about max right here. It looks like it's about four feet or so wide and maybe three feet tall. Because it does well down on the other end, I know it will fill in this space beautifully. And I think that glossy green, more bold leaf has a really good look back in there. And then uh, I brought the iris, the leftover iris from behind the Hartley. When Chad was doing kind of his final excavation, I asked if he could just scoop up some of those iris because I didn't have a chance to move them and I really wanted them over here. And I've been kind of working off of that pile, bringing iris over and I love that texture. I mean, the blooms are gorgeous. They're kind of a champagne pink, so they go beautifully in this uh, section of the garden because uh, we're going with purples, pinks and whites in this spot. Uh, but I love that strappy grassy texture throughout the rest of the season. So I did a ring of those, sort of, like kind of a ring around the elderberry there. They're just sitting on top of the soil, not planted yet. And then we've got a couple of the Fall in Love Sweetly anemones right here, which we're trying them out in full sun out in the South Garden. They're doing beautifully. So I'm just gonna tuck these two back in here. Sorry about the lighting, guys. Kind of a weird time of day. And then I'm just gonna tuck these in front. These are Sun Patience Compact White. Uh, I think that'll be a really beautiful deep green with that bright color and it'll kind of mirror, you know, what's going on over here. And of course the white swan echinacea, now that it's uncovered from the elderberry, should start looking a little bit better and filling in. If we like the pillar, I'll probably move this, this one right here, the smaller echinacea, and like move it over in here or back in there so that we have space for that pillar. Okay, we're gonna try the pillar out and then I'll start to plant.
Oh, you guys, I think it works. I haven't leveled it or anything like that. I popped it between the iris and the echinacea that's uh, there currently. I'm gonna have to rerun a drip line because the drip line goes right underneath it. So when I do that, I will bump this echinacea forward. So that will be right behind the hookra. Of course, all of these plants, the hookras will go down about, oh, I don't know, eight, nine inches. So we'll be able to see this just a little bit more, but I love that metal basket on the top. So we can plant that up with something fun and just have some perennials, you know, around the bottom, which will really just kind of cover up that pillar. So we'll just see that basket, which is kind of perfect. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? And from the other side, I don't think I'm gonna mess with this. I don't think I'm gonna try to create some kind of a balanced planting around it because it's just not, that's not what this area is in this flower bed. I would have to really, I'd have to work on this area a lot to create that. So what I'll do then is get all the plants planted, rerun this drip line, move that echinacea. And I don't think we'll plant that today because I don't know that I have the stuff that I would wanna put in there. Wouldn't that be pretty with a bunch of Sempervivums? Just like a little mounded, very kind of understated, not bright kind of to take away from the area. I think that'd be a really pretty display. Oh, and then we've got all this to take care of. I gotta go uh, dig five more holes somewhere else and get rid of our debris. I'm so excited about how this is coming together though. I think it's so pretty and so much better than it was. So let's get after it. so much better so much better you can see the anemones tucked in there on the right hand side of the elderberry the nice drift of iris which i love having repeat texture i've got some midway and then i've got some all the way at the end so the only space where i'm going to need a few more is between these first two urns to kind of create that cohesion in this area uh, but i really like it it just provides such a rest for the eye really and then those who grow so dolce wildberry they bring kind of that magical look with those bloom stalks i think kind of like fairy-esque you can see honeybee on one of them right now oh. and this spot needed that color i mean we added in the red obelisk beach but it's more of a deep green not a red right here it's more red when it comes out like in the very first part of this season and we'll see what it does this fall i still like the vertical texture of that but i really needed something that brought that kind of that purpley color i had to redirect the drip line twice <laughs> so for some reason i got in my head that this crack right here was the middle one and it's not it was the one over so i centered the whole pillar moved the drip line and then realized when i went to plant this hookra that this crack was the middle one <laughs> so i had to shift everything over and redirect the line which wasn't a big deal except for the drip uh, zone was on so i got all kind of muddy and and gross <laughs> but the button bush back in here just looks so sweet with its fluffy little blooms so that will be up taller than the iris and then the next layer is the iris and the echinacea so there are four echinacea there's one the little guy right there that i moved and then there are two more so once those are you know all this size which this one was the furthest away from the shrub um you know before we cut it back they were all kind of smothered by all of the foliage so now they should pick up and fill in like this which i absolutely adore and i like the fact that there's a little swoop of uh hookra and then there's one right there it just gives it a little bit a little bit less of a contrived look um a little bit more i don't know pretty if we back up in this space, we do have um, ladies mantle, which I need to shear back at this point as well. I just skipped that today because we've got so much other, so many other things to do. And then back behind the flocks, I think I'm going to tuck maybe grass, uh, you know, like a totem pole panicum back in there. And then of course the delphiniums will grow and fill back in. But we've also got a couple of sedum right up here, which bloom a bright pink. And then, you know, of course the nepeta and the dahlias. We've got some dahlias, three of them back in here that are a bright pink. Here's the look coming up this direction. 
that planter right there, I know it makes it look like the pillar isn't uh, level. The pillar's level, the planter is kind of slanted. Uh, which I've got a size larger of that planter, but I think that that is kind of the perfect scale right there. So we will tackle that another day when I figure out what exactly we want in there. And then hopefully I can get a good picture when it's overcast or, you know, dusk or something like that, when all the lighting is kind of the same and this is also in the shade. I am just so pleased with how this area turned out, the whole thing. And you know, as we develop, especially the right-hand side of the pathway more and more with perennials and more fluffy things, it makes me, one, want to trim the boxwoods on time so I can do them a lot more tight than they are now. You know, I got to it really late, so I just did a very light trim, so they're still kind of fluffy, but I kind of want to leave this spot empty. Either empty or with something very kind of clean and uniform, uh, so not as not to add to this, because this is going to be such a jumble of color and beautiful things. If I did it on both sides, I think that that would be too much. I think having the, the strong structure over here and seeing that kind of makes the jumble work for me anyway. Okay, so now we have a whole bunch of other things to run out and plant. So like I said, the white ones, Veronica did not make the cut for this area. So I'm going to put them out in the south garden. They're all, they're looking pretty good. They were in the sun there for a while. I think just saturating the root balls helped. And then I'll water them in really well once we plant them. And then we've got uh, several of the purple, several of the pink, and I think I'll plant the grass a different day. And it's getting warm, so I want to go out there and get this done quick. guys I got all of Veronica in the ground it all looks awesome got it watered in so it should be good to go when it's this hot like I said we water the root ball before we put it in the hole I water it in after and then we just keep an eye on them every single day uh, we run drip to them pretty soon after we plant them hopefully that's the goal anyway and I just make sure there's an emitter by each one of the root balls but I still go by and check them every day just in case this is where I put the purple illusion Veronica so these are a zone four through eight and this variety grows about 16 to 18 inches tall and wide so this will be just a really sweet little uh, drift and especially near the firefly peach sky you know this is the color of the aged blooms that's the color of the more fresh blooms but both both of them look beautiful with that purple color. I just love it. This is the variety that one year I had some of these in front of our gazebo and when I cut them back, they were completely full. Or I went to go cut them back and I didn't because they were completely full of ladybug larvae. And I don't know if this is like a host plant for them. I didn't find any aphid damage or anything. I expected to see some food source nearby, but it wasn't this, it was just covered in larva. So I'm hoping that they do the same thing out here. And then just one more thing on the other side of the pathway here, the serendipity alliums are about ready to burst into bloom, but we've got another gorgeous echinacea. This is the, I think, supreme cantaloupe. Isn't that beautiful? I think I had one more right here that I lost, so I'm gonna to need to try to find one more or tuck in another serendipity. That would be beautiful too, just to kind of fill in that little space. But I just love every stage. I mean, look at it when it very first opens, as it ages, and then that, just gorgeous. Okay, other two are over here. The annuals we planted are really looking great. Got three pink cannas in there in with the yellows. I don't know what in the world, how that happened. And honestly, these pots are looking pretty good too. I had to cut back the nasturtium recently because it was so enormous. It was starting to gobble up the other plants. So I cut it back, hopefully it'll flush. If it doesn't, the other plants will fill in. Okay, so then we have the pink potion right here, which I planted right to the side of the hyssop that we just recently put in. And this is just starting to bloom beautifully. Kind of that light periwinkle color. And I think the, that will look beautiful with the pink color right here. 
This one grows about 14 to 16 inches tall and 18 to 20 inches wide. So it'll be just this beautiful mass. I'm really excited about that. And I was thinking I've got some beautiful purple sedum that I could put right in here just to kind of contrast what's going on here. I think I'm gonna do that here soon. And here's the white wands, looking a tiny bit droopy, but it should be just fine. And I just kind of massed them together right here. I think it'll be a really nice look. 14 to 16 inches tall and about a 20 inch spread on those. So I usually leave a little space right in front of a hose link. I think I'll put a stepping stone, like a flagstone right there, just so it's easy to get to it. Um, and then I'm thinking it might be pretty to put more of the purple sedum near this white wands. I don't really have anything in this space that's got that purple or red color. Uh, we've got a blueberry muffin viburnum, the white wands, there's a pink echinacea. I don't know the name of this one. It was not marked when I planted it. The blonde ambition grass, the tiger eye sumac, which I love, love, love. And then there's more cat's pajamas nepeta right there. But we need something red over here. Sedum, nine barks, maybe black lace elderberry. I mean, you can see the forest pansy from this spot, but Need something closer and that you guys is going to be it for today i was able to get that done before noon it's only 93 right now so i mean it's hot but it's not 103 so i'm not going to complain about that and i absolutely love where everything ended up the, all the veronica's the whole little spot by the elderberry i'm just so pleased with it right when i got done i took pictures of it and sent it to aaron and he was he was loving it too. He came right out to come take a look. So anyway, now we got to go get everything watered, make sure everything's tucked in and ready to go for the heat uh, for the rest of the day. And it looks like our 10 day is all above 100. So uh, we're just kind of in for it for a little while. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.